What's up, my sweaties? It is episode 77 of Collider Heroes. We are one day away from the New York Comic Con. It's October 5th. The excitement is real. And uh, joining me are some of the panelists who are going to be at New York Comic Con tomorrow. Uh, right over in the corner, we got Robert Meyer Burnett. Hello there. And uh, how about that Hot Toys figure of Luke Cage they haven't made yet? <laughs> That's right. Man, well, I want that figure. I know you do too. Uh, so much. Well, maybe there's going to be a Hot Toys preview of some, you know, that glass case that you'll be like dripping, like, oh, like <laughs> that's going to be there. You know, you know, for me, it's like Wall Street. Mm. It's what I what am I investing in next that's year? Right. It's, it's the glass case, the sideshow booth. Totally. All of those things. That is a giant investment because those suckers are like 300 bucks each. Uh, I'm sticking <laughs> to Pops and the other crimely $10 things. I still, I was telling Robert, I still have not hit the, the buy button on that Joker Batman Hot Toys because yeah. I'm mm. fearful because now they got the Daredevil, they got like Doctor Strange. It's like, it just opens the Pandora's box of incredible spending yeah. <laughs> and awesomeness, but you know, I'm not ready yet. Who is ready? Jason Inman, what's up? Thanks for being on the That's show. That's right. I was going to say, I am almost ready to buy the Daredevil Netflix hot toy that I saw they announced a couple it's weeks ago. It's so cool. I, I, it's great. <laughs> it looks amazing. It does. It's like they keep doing this stuff to like just really damage our pocketbooks. I'm like, come on, man. Hot toys. Just make a couple of sucky action you know, figures or statues or whatever you're going to call them. And you're going to be uh, uh, hosting your DC All Access yes. show tomorrow and the whole weekend. I mean, it sounds like you got a lot of cool stuff. Planned. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be hosting also a, the Superman, the official DC Comic Superman panel at New York Comic Con as well, and the Collider awesome. Heroes as well. Yeah, the so Collider guys. Heroes. Also, Ashley V. Robinson. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being on the show, and you're going to be there tomorrow too. I will. I'll be mostly wandering, lost around Artist Alley, so you can mm. find me there. At Artist <laughs> Alley in New York Comic Con. If you haven't been able to make it yet, is its own incredible airport hangar of awesomeness, and it's you're going to have to trudge through at least ten thousand other people who are in your way, stopping you from experiencing the awesome writers and artists who are at Artist Alley. And you'll be so, stuck behind someone in Hulkbuster. You will be stuck behind a lot of slow moving people. Have patience. It is all worth it. Once you round that corner, oh, it's like the Simpsons. It's like, oh my God, that music, golden light blasting from you. Uh, Collider Heroes is also going to be there. Uh, we've got a live panel. It's going to be room 1A24. That, once again, that's room 1A24 at 1115 on Thursday, tomorrow, October 6th. Uh, you know, definitely come by. We got myself. We got Jason Inman. We got Ashley V. Robinson. Hopefully, Robert, you're going to be able to make it. He might be on the red eye, but we're going to see what happens. So we're hoping all of us will be there to say what's up and hello to you and sweat it out. So bring your best questions. Bring your A game to sweat it out with us. Also, I'm going to I'm going to have a, a, a booth over in the block. So definitely come to booth 309. Myself, Holly Payne, Schnapp Zone is going to be there. We're at the Tenacious Toys booth 309. Where you're gonna also be, not only will you be able to get The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, uh, our Blu ray DVD special signed by both me and Holly Payne. We're gonna have limited quantities there. We have a special variant cover. Get it before we're out. I think we have about 30 copies left of the variant cover, and then there'll never be another cover. Of course, you can get the regular one. I'll also be premiering my own statue. It's a 12 inch statue of a character I created a couple years back called Unicrom, the Unicorn Barbarian. That's right, you can pre order it starting on October. October 6th at New York Comic Con. So definitely check it out. He's a unicorn, he's a barbarian, and he's crazy mad. It's Unicrom. So definitely check that out. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so thank you. It's going to be fun. I teamed up with Big Shot Toys. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm very happy about New York Comic Con. I'm glad you guys are going to be there. We're going to have a really fun time. And this episode is dedicated to the entire weekend of New York Comic Con, where we're just going to talk about some of the things we think they might be showing, some of the things we're looking forward to, because New York Comic Con is literally our window into next year, 2017. And that's what we're going to get started on. So let's start off with Marvel and DC's movie presentations. We'll be looking into the future from both Marvel and DC as they give us a preview of what's in store for us in 2017. What do you think will be the highlight from Wonder Woman? Is it going to be Justice League? What about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Spider-Man, Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok? All these films are coming at us, especially from Marvel and DC. And then we're going to touch on some other films that are coming as well. Ashley, let's start with you. What is your highlight thing that you're looking forward to 2017? It's always going to be Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is the number one thing I'm looking forward to. There's a chance that we had a really cool preview of it at San Diego that we're going to get maybe some more footage or some exclusive clips. Hopefully they will also live on the internet. DC tends to do that, which is really cool. On the Marvel side of things, I think that Thor Ragnarok could really be the breakout star here mm. because they hadn't even started shooting when we had San Diego. So we have no teases except for some animatics that we saw, which were cool. But now 
about half the movie's wrapped, even though they're still casting new people all the right? time. Like everyone and Beta Ray Bill is going to be in this movie. So that's Better the be. one. Right. That's the one that I have my eye on uh, more than anything else from Marvel. Is Better be Bill in this better, movie. Hashtag well. better yeah. be Bill. <laughs> How about you, Jason? You know, I would not be surprised that this is the first big Comic-Con since we've seen um, Spider-Man and Civil War that is set in Spider-Man's hometown. Ooh, good that call. I think that we've been seeing a lot of pictures break on the internet. I, I saw one just this morning uh, where he uh, had his mask up and you could see his mouth totally. and, he was si and he was sitting there. So like, I would not be surprised if we get some sort of clip from Spider-Man. On the other side, I think, yeah, DC, I think, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a clip from Wonder Woman, some sort of scene from Wonder mm -hmm. Woman. And that's the little wettest. I don't think we'll get a full trailer right. because I think they're gonna save the full trailer for like Fantastic Beasts or another one of their big Christmas movies. Sure. Oh, that's but uh, I think we'll get a I think we'll get a nice little taste of a scene. How about you, Robert? Well, I, yeah, I was gonna say that too, mm -hmm. but I think Guardians of the Galaxy two, as far as Marvel is concerned, mm -hmm. the, I I'm, because they showed something at Comic Con way early on. They brought out the Gal uh, the Guardians. They showed a trailer. Right. I'm pretty sure that they're gonna. They're gonna give us a little bit of Drop Guardians of the nugget. Galaxy um, Volume Two, or what is it? It's Volume, volume two, two, right? Yeah. Flavor, I was gonna say, which mixtape? And it'd be perfect yeah, timing too. since Doctor Strange <laughs> yeah. is just around the corner. Just around the corner, so. and as you know, as far as DC is concerned, probably I wouldn't a Justice League clip. I could imagine mm -hmm. them seeing, and of course, another Wonder Woman. I'd love to see a a scene from Wonder Woman, mm. like mm -hmm. like just even if it's just Wonder Woman talking to somebody. Yeah. You know, more of that, and a finished scene. I think we'd probably see that. Yeah, and I mean, Doctor Strange will be out by that time. You know, once I mean, you know, I mean, not you know, not tomorrow, but I'm just saying, like, it's 2016. We're looking yeah, yeah, into yeah. the future. Right. But I mean, you know, well, let's just talk a little bit about Doctor Strange. The trailer, the one minute tr uh, trailer dropped last week, had a lot of new footage, a lot mm -hmm. of new. Uh, you know, Marvel does this the best way. Is like they show a little bit more from a scene that they showed earlier. They like you know, from the each trailer kind of grows a little bit. Mm -hmm. And like, so you, they don't ruin the entire movie. They just give you a little bit more. And in this, we got a little bit of that. Well, the Avengers are busy doing this. You know, Doctor Strange and all of us are busy, you know, defending the entire universe. So I liked how they opened it up. They brought the Avengers into the story just by just name dropping them. But also, I mean, the humor quotient. I mean, like, uh, what was mm -hmm. it? Uh, Mr. Uh, 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 what was it, Mr. Strange or uh, Dr. Mr., you know? Yeah. Like that, that kind of thing was like, uh, to myself, that was a little like, that's Dan Harmon, that's that humor, that that's why they brought in another writer was to add some of this levity that might not have been there that they need to have mm -hmm. to make that Marvel film kind of flavor. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I kind of worry about when they go back and add humor into properties that don't necessarily have it in there inherently because Doctor Strange is not a hilarious character and you can say what you want about Suicide Squad they did go back and inject a lot of humor in that from the original mm -hmm. cut but Harley Quinn and even the Joker depending on who's writing him they're characters with with jokes there's mm -hmm. humor elements in a lot of those characters so I'm looking forward to that movie because it's a Marvel movie and it's Doctor Strange and it's Benedict Cumberbatch so I'm there but I worry that maybe Dan Harmon humor is a step too far outside of what we've seen in the pre-existing Marvel universe. Well, now, and everyone's gonna argue well, Russo brothers, well, community, but they're not, it's not exactly, like he's a little bit more absurd. Well, I was gonna add, I mean, Harmon's also a sweaty. He's, an, he's a comic yes. book fan, and I think his humor, he was approaching it, is my guess, is he was approaching it with having that dry sense of humor. I hope so. And that's that back and forth that we have with Doctor Strange and the main villain. It's definitely, it's not like a joke, it's more like, it's just, it's a humorous <laughs> misunderstanding. So what are your thoughts, Robert? Well, I, you know, it, I've read something interesting last week. It was a recap on Dark Horizons of an interview Kevin Feige gave about the Doctor Strange film. And he said, look, this is pretty much a standalone movie mm -hmm. because they have so much they have to establish the mm -hmm. whole mystic realm sure. and everything, which I liked hearing right. that they can, they, they're, they're doing a standalone film. I mean, Ant-Man was pretty much a standalone movie as well. I mean, it established yeah, the that Falcon, universe. that's about it. We did, that, well, we did was, go to Avengers Mansion for like right. a second. Right, <laughs> right, right. I don't, and there might be something like that in, in Doctor Strange, but I like the fact that it's kind of a standalone film because it really is a different approach to mm -hmm. the Marvel Universe. But I don't mind that kind of humor. I mean, that the great thing in the first trailer with Shambhala, mm -hmm. you know, what is that? Right. The Wi-Fi <laughs> We're not savages. You know, I thought that was yeah. great. With Chiwetel Ejiofor, he's—I yes. mean—and he, he's always—he can never be funny, even when he's being funny. I—that's what I love about mm. him. I mean, I loved him in uh, this in Serenity. Sure. Yeah. You know, as the yeah. killer. I mean, yeah. every time he's ever been in anything, I love that guy. But and what a great casting choice. But I think if it's that kind of humor, it's okay because, like mm -hmm. you said, 
He's not a he's not a yuck yuck comedian. Yeah. No one's Strange. gonna be cracking jokes. No, I'm pretty sure about. It. How about you? Think? What do you think, Jason? You know, I thought the new trailer was, from my opinion, should have been the first trailer. Mm. But I also noticed that you could kind of see in that trailer a little bit of like, this was the trailer that they were very afraid about showing us at first. They were like, okay, let's show them a couple like Inception style like yeah. action right. movie trailers, and then we'll warm them up for this one. Um, but I really liked it. But I will say this: going straight out to Marvel PR, if you're not listening. Um, if you're not going to show a screening of Doctor Strange sometime this weekend during New York Comic Con, you're crazy and you're stupid because the film is finished <laughs> and you need you should do that because all the sweaties are there. Right. You you let a thousand sweaties see this movie early and then watch that word of mouth spread across New York Comic Con and Doctor Strange will be the only thing. Jason, we're talking it about. could happen. I mean, we yep. know that there Marvel is releasing like a very special clip. I mm -hmm. believe it's October 10th. Like in all mm -hmm. theaters all, all around the world, mm -hmm. so or at least in America. So. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, in whatever Doctor Strange, like, do the thing like what J.J. Abrams did at Star Wars yeah. a couple years ago. Whoever goes to the, the Doctor Strange panel, just be like, and everybody here, you get a ticket to see it tonight. And can I add Marvel uh, Press and all the other cool people <laughs> who are in charge of us seeing Doctor Strange, please invite us at the Collider Heroes crew <laughs> to be there present <laughs> at your secret screening, wherever it possibly is. <laughs> Because we're really excited to see your film called Doctor Strange. We'll Remember nice us things. from? Yeah, Are you sure it's not Mister Strange? Uh, Mister Doctor, I th can't wait to see that movie. I'll call him whatever he wants to be. Well, I get to see the movie early. Let's talk about. <laughs> we've talked about the movies. I mean, I do want to add one little flavor nugget about Thor Ragnarok that, yeah. that they did actually. They were shooting. They were shooting for about six days because the trailer that they showed had some clips of Thor with like almost like Braveheart makeup on. Yeah. So there was a couple days of shooting. But, but, they but were, their their principal uh, everything that they shot I think before San Diego was with the established with Thor, Loki, yes. Odin, all of the new exciting Carl Urban people uh, right. came in after that. They were added <laughs> after, but they did have a couple of, you know, a really amazing, uh, you know, concept art sequences yeah. where we saw Hela and we saw like what could be Thor fighting Surtur. Come mm. on! <laughs> and, and the that's other, incredible. And the other thing that re recently announced is who is Sam Neill in this movie? Mm, that's right. Recently he's, cast. He's the, the doctor scientist guy who's going to lead us through the park of Asgard, obviously. <laughs> he's Damien. He's that's the adult right. Damien. That's, right. <laughs> that's who he is. Look at here, Marvel. <laughs> yeah. We don't know who he's going to be playing. Let's talk about television. Streaming series and network series. We've got Iron Fist and the Defenders. We've got Supergirl, Arrow, The, the Flash, and Legends of Tomorrow. We've got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Ghost Rider. We've got Gotham and Preacher and Legion and Lucifer. I can't believe this. We've even got The Walking Dead. Don't forget, that was a comic book. We've got Ninjak, Exo Manowar, <laughs> and Shadow Man popping up on the web. 2017 is going to be simply bananas for series online, series on television. How can we possibly watch all of these shows? I don't know. I still haven't been able to catch up on everything. What pops out to any one of you? Let's start off with you, Robert. 2017, what's the series that you're going to be watching? You know, I'm really excited for this Valiant web series mm. because... The idea, look, the Valiant universe is certainly not Marvel and DC. And I did like a lot of those Valiant comics. I liked Exo Man of War. Mm -hmm. I liked Solar. I liked Archer and Armstrong. Right. That was uh, Barry Windsor Smith right. rocking on Archer and Armstrong. You had Bart Sears killing it on the Exo Man of War. Really good. And, and I'm just curious is how do you create a universe? A shared universe because they're going all in. I think starting as a web series first mm -hmm. means they don't have to spend a hundred million dollars to make. It's not that big of a crapshoot, right? And they can expand it. I'm I'm just curious to see how are the, how are these characters going to look? Right. What are the VFX going to look like? What is? I mean, the Marvel films have sort of a brightly colored palette mm -hmm. to them. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy more so, but for the most part, it's very real world. Is Exo Mana War going to be set in this world today? Mm -hmm. Is the entire Valiant universe going to be? How is that going to work? I can't wait to see it. Yeah, uh, my guess is probably they will just to maintain some semblance. I mean, they're going to have to set it in a specific time period as opposed to jumping all around, but it's hard to tell. Um, yeah, definitely for myself, I'm looking forward to Preacher Season 2. Um, I think it was great. I mean, it had a couple of bumpy episodes along the way, but the preacher, the way it ended, the way they wrapped everything up as far as season one, we're on the road. I'm very excited to see that series move forward, especially with the adaptations of all the future. You know, if you haven't read Preacher, do yourself a favor, read that series. It's a great series from beginning to end. It's a finite series, so you can actually get the entire thing. It's not going to be going on forever. And that's the same thing with the, the, the television series. They're going to probably run maybe six seasons, seven seasons, mm -hmm. and it will end with the ending maybe different, but it'll definitely end some way. What, what about you, Ashley? Uh, the thing that I'm most excited for is Supergirl, but I want to say one more thing about Valiant. The idea about launching it with a web series is a really interesting idea to me because 
we take certain things in new media very seriously and we take certain things not very seriously. Mm. We're very fortunate that people take news and commentary quite seriously online. Right. So we get to present the show here with a certain amount of quality and people will accept it as a viable genre news source as right. opposed to narrative. People don't take narrative as seriously when it's presented first online, even though people are watching Netflix on their computer and you're basically just watching a web series with a bigger budget. So right. I think Valiant has a chance to really take like the new media narrative bubble and expand that in a really interesting way that could push smaller genre projects mm -hmm. forward in a really interesting way. But if you haven't seen some of the latest trailers that have Supergirl and really bumbling, really hairy Clark Kent in it, mm -hmm. then I think you're missing out on something that's going to be really exciting. The reviews that are already out are really, really positive. And I hope, I liked the first season so much, I really hope it finds its home here. Sure. And I think that, again, we could open up the doors for a more diverse like they're gonna green light three or four more superhero shows. Can we have like a lady there or a person of color? That'd be super cool. I think you're gonna see that. And let me <laughs> let me bounce off a little bit. I think you know Dinesh and all the people from Valiant. Mm -hmm. I think doing this web series, especially with the guys like uh, Bat in the Sun, that production team, Aaron Shanky and his and his dad, uh, Sean Key and his dad, and the entire team from Bat in the Sun. If we've we've actually talked about a couple of them, they're so well done mm -hmm. and they're made with such love. And it's like stunt people like like who are like yo, we really and, love these and, characters. And they cast. Their lead, Ninjak, is being played by Michael Rowe, who played Deadshot on Arrow. Yep. Nice. He's a great actor, and, and that's a solid actor to and, build and your web series And he came up around. as a stuntman. Yeah. Right. So he does all his own work. All these people are like, do incredible stunts. I think the level of special effects are so insane. So I was so happy to hear that that company, Bat in the Sun, got the chance to bring this, this version of Valiant to life. I think it's going to blow people away. So I'm very excited. I know they're going to have a big announcement uh, coming up in the next couple days at New York Comic Con. Check it out. Out, we'll all be there. Um, the other thing you mentioned, Supergirl, yeah. very fantastic. We've all seen the extended trailers with Superman and best of all, Clark Kent. No, he's not dead in the television world. <laughs> and in fact, he's hanging out talking with Perry White, yeah. Great Caesars Ghost, and all this kind of cool stuff that if you're a comic head, you'll be like, wow, that's really cool. And they did a great job with, I mean, Tyler Hoechlin or Hoechlin, however you say it. Hecklin. Hecklin. Sorry, yep. we'll all know your name like soon, your, Tyler. Like your Hecklin. I know. It's yep. like, <laughs> excuse us. We didn't know who you were. Now you're Superman. We'll have to learn how to say your name. Uh, Hecklin, you did a good job, son. Uh, so Clark Kent. And Superman, I love the scene that, you know, Robert and I were talking about this earlier where it comes up and like just kind of floating next to Supergirl's like, hey, everything cool? Yeah. You know what I mean? I think the way they're inter they're introducing Superman, but also it's Supergirl's show. It and is. I think it's a great thing the way they're introducing him, the character. I can easily see next year them like, Leo, we're, we're doing a TV series that's called Superman. I can easily yeah. see that happening. Robert, what about you? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, the, the t I can't, first of all, I can't believe the TV landscape that we have crazy. in terms of superhero shows. Again, I've said this so many times, we live in an age of wonders, but 10 years ago, I never would have thought, I can't believe how many superhero shows there actually are and what we're talking about. We're talking about, there was a photo that dropped online last week of just Jay Garrick standing next to Barry Allen. Yes. Yeah. You know, the and real I, yeah. Jay Garrick. The real, the, the real so Jay cool. Garrick. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, first of all, he looks so cool. The yeah. Jay Garrick looks so cool. I, as a kid, I don't know. I always used to love, for some reason, I love the Flash, but Jay Garrick, I loved his his hat. Right, the <laughs> metal <laughs> little weird disc yeah, with the wings. Yeah. It's so World retro. World it's so yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad that you, that you bring up the the old school guy because that's the thing that I'm the most excited about is especially the Legends of Tomorrow because they're introducing the Justice Society of America. Right. Who, is, who we've actually seen in live action before in Smallville, right? And they looked very plasticky, mm -hmm. but like I just think that for me, I thought Legends was a lot of fun, and they nailed a lot of the DC Easter eggs in season in season one. Mm -hmm. So like for them to like create this entire just the second episode of Legends of Tomorrow is titled "The Justice Society of America," and we've seen a picture on Instagram of the table, right. yeah. from like the Berlanti crew. I, I yeah. mean, this this to me as as an old school JLA JSA fan. Looking at there, there was that that Jay Garrett costume was they nailed it. Mm -hmm. it. It had that rocketeer feel. Totally, you know, it looked like he's part flyer, part speedster. You know, I just <laughs> yeah. I, I'm looking at this stuff and I'm thinking, what for all the problems in the world today? You know, <laughs> with this upcoming crazy election and everything happening in the Middle East and uh, migrants and Syria Climate being change. destroyed. Yeah, here madness. Yeah. You know, on one hand, the, the world could be a lot much, but much better place. But then when I see pictures of Jay Garrick standing next to Barry Allen, I'm like, 
Well, there are other parts of the world that yep. are still pretty and, cool. And, and dreams <laughs> come true. Yes. Robert is trying to dreams say thank you, CW, for giving us some of this amazing flavor that we never <laughs> thought we'd even get a never. chance. Justice Society, what's up? All I can say is I hope Dr. Fate is uh, imminently uh, in the in the series. I don't know if he is or not. Which Dr. Fate? I know, which Dr. Fate. Well, <laughs> let's move on. We've got animated films also premiering at New York Comic Con. We've got Hulk Where Monsters Dwell and DC, that's Marvel's Hulk Where Monsters Dwell. And then we've got DC's Cape Crusaders, the original Batman uh, TV uh, series coming at you this weekend as an animated movie. The way that graphic just came up, it right. kind of made it look like uh, Adam West and Burt Ward, Batman and Robin are facing off against the Hulk. And I now want to see that movie. <laughs> I would love to see a Joker Hulk just turn turn the, the Hulk completely white and be like, what the hell? Um, what New York Comic Con 2017. Yeah, this is, so these are coming out. Out relatively soon um, we've seen the the you know the little trailer for the Cape Crusaders one I thought it was fantastic of him boiling up in a micro a microwave dinner uh, hearing Adam West and Burt Ward mm -hmm. being Batman and Robin again I don't know if you uh, younger kids have seen the original 66 Batman television series do yourself a favor take off the the dark you know Christian Bale and even Michael <laughs> Keaton or Ben Affleck Batman and put that over to the corner a little <laughs> bit and think about the Lego Batman trailer that you all loved and laughed at then you're gonna get a little bit of that kind of flavor that was the Batman television series with Adam West and Burt Ward it had a campy humor to it it's definitely corny but it's funny and give it a chance it's it's a lot of fun and it's totally it's a different world of Batman but it, it's a, a world you should check out well, you know why I think it's really this this movie, The Return of the Cape Crusaders, is so important, at least for me, mm -hmm. is because, you know, there were Hot Toys figures of the Burt Ward, Adam West, Batman, wow. and Robin, but they were going to make a six-scale Batmobile. What? The six-scale Batmobile from the Batman TV series is the coolest Batmobile ever, and one of the greatest cars ever made. Wasn't for it any a Lincoln? It was, yes, it yeah, was, yeah. I believe but it's, it, the, way, the way it was built, it's so cool, and they were gonna make a six scale version of How it. How big is that on the table? That's like about that's about like this giant. big. No, that's, that's probably big. bigger. Dude. That's a coffee table but size. I loved it. Since I was a little kid, my my favorite toy when I was a kid was the Corgi. Oh yeah, dude, I Batmobile. Had that. Yeah. It had the little plastic figures the in it. Plastic too. figures in the. Did it have a little plastic Corgi in it? The, well, no, no, it did not. No, just a little micro Batman and the knife up the front. You know, and I want that. I had the I also had the helicopter. I had all the Corgi like Batman. They were great. I mean, that was super cool. Cool. That Batman movie, there's a 66 Batman movie with Joker, Penguin, mm -hmm. uh, Riddler, Just and Catwoman. The yep. <laughs> they can't get rid of that bomb. Definitely. Uh, do yourself a favor. See the series or the movie and check this out. And remember, Batman has a lot of different you know, dimensions to him as far as his characterizations. You read a 1950s Batman, it's a lot different than a 2000 Batman. So what are your thoughts on these animated movies? Well, I'm really excited for Batman, The Return of the Cape Crusaders. Um, I don't know anything really about this Hulk movie, so I don't know. But Marvel's very hit or miss on their mm -hmm. animated side, right. um, whereas DC has been like pretty solid, you know, with a couple hits and misses there. Um, but their one that I know is going to have a presence uh, here at New York Comic Con is uh, Justice League Dark, mm. which is also has a different dimension of Batman totally. in it as well, and is bringing back Matt Ryan, who voiced TV Constantine, to voice Constantine in the movie. It's not going to be released until 2017. That's great. So I have no idea. I know that they're going to have some of the cast there. I know nice. they're going to talk about the movie. I don't think they're going to show the movie, but I bet we see some clips or we see a new trailer. Yeah. I, so, well, and again, the demon, that man, I, that, hardcore Jack Kirby stuff. Yeah, Clarion, Clarion, yeah, Clarion. <laughs> I was so happy. I'm so happy you brought that up because that is really, truly the biggest for me. The, the animated mm -hmm. movie that I'm waiting for for next yeah. year is Just League Dark me because too. it does have yeah. all these bizarro characters that I've I've collected all of their individual uh, mm -hmm. you know comic runs. You got Swamp Thing, you got Etrigan the Demon. So there's so many Zatanna. Different Zatanna. Yeah. It's a lot of different characters. The weirdo, darker, more supernatural side. Of course, you know they have to chuck Batman in there because it helps sell mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. idea of it. And so it's like, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's a good thing. It'll help people, you know, buy and see the Justice League Dark film, and hopefully it's going to be killer. So I'm really looking forward to that. Where Hulk, where monsters dwell, my guess is that you're going to see Fin Fang Foom. You're going to see uh, some of these crazy, my, I am Orblock, Goom the Destroyer, Devil Dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, Devil, they could have Devil Moon Dinosaur. Boy. Oh my God. I mean, this is the crazy part of Hulk where monsters dwell. 
Hulk is already a monster. Where Monsters Dwell was a really cool series. I, I believe it was an original series that was like just, just kind of uh, showing like all the little short stories that Stanley and Jack Kirby did back in the fifties. Was a great way to kind of reprint them. And they uh, um, they revived it for Secret Wars. Yes. There was a mini, a brief yeah, they, mini series. It was set there yeah. As the well. Secret Wars was fun, and they were able to take a lot of those like main monsters and kind of have them team up in yeah. a kind of comedic way. But I cannot wait to see an animated Fin Fang Foom fight the Hulk. What are your thoughts? Are you kidding? Yeah. I mean, I, I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, is where monsters? Well, I, I, is it Monster Island? You know, like oh, where all yeah. the kaiju Ooh, live? Or Savage know. Land. You know, yeah, like you, or the Savage Land. I mean, I love that stuff. You know, I even loved where even in uh, uh, the Asgardian Wars, where mm -hmm. you know that long, what was it, the wasteland that she had to walk, mm -hmm. the, however you pronounce her name, had to walk across the wasteland after she'd been turned gigantically huge. Sure, I mean. I, I love just give me a land where there's full of monsters. Where monsters well, I want to yeah. see it. I think we're going to get that with Hulk, where monsters dwell. So <laughs> we're looking forward to that. Let's rock on into the minor mutations this week. Is Punisher going to be in Netflix's Defenders movie? Number two, how will the Harbinger and Bloodshot movies from Sony interact with Ninjak and the Exo Manowar series? That'll be a web series. Number three, we got Command Command D. That's right. I'm finally going to say it right for the first time in my life. Thank you, Jason. Yes. Uh, gets a big comic event. Is a television series it's too soon to talk about? Come on, we got War of the Planet of the Apes. Where's <laughs> Command D happening? I want that series immediately. <laughs> um, and finally, four, Stan Lee. Now, you know, Kamikaze just changed their name officially to Stan Lee's Los Angeles Comic Con, and October 28th is now the official day. It is Stan Lee Day here in California. It's official. Stan Lee's got a day named after him. What is he doing in these Marvel films? Who is he? Is he, is he a scroll or is he a watcher? The debate continues, but Kevin Feige recently said, look, look, we canned four more cameos for Stan Lee in our upcoming Marvel film. So you're like, all right, four more, then that's definitely Doctor Strange, right? Mm -hmm. Then we got Guardians. Right. Thor. Then we got Thor, and then the Avengers: Infinity War. At, le at least one of or the Infinity Spider War. Homecoming. Or oh, Spider-Man: Spider Homecoming. Oh, Spider-Man: Homecoming. Yeah, yeah. Because would they wait to reveal that Stan Lee is a Watcher or a Skrull <laughs> for Infinity Wars? Because I keep, I, mm -hmm. I am praying that they are like rocking the Kree Skrull War. I'm that praying I, that he's Uatu. The Watcher. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would yeah. love it to. I would like it. Yeah. I mean, if he's just a scroll, it'd be a little disappointing. Mm -hmm. Super scroll. Yeah, I mean, even though it's him being Uatu or just a watcher yeah. and reporting to mm -hmm. Uatu, maybe sure. he's like, well, I've been watching these guys forever. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, all right, go back and keep <laughs> go watching. Go find me the ultimate nullifier. That's right. You know? click, click, click. I love the ultimate. In fact, I think they made a prop of they the did. ultimate nullifier. They did. I'm going to have to search that down on e eBay. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, get with it, son. That's what Stop Galactus. <laughs> Google Robert, that. What do you think? Well, first of all, if there's a scene where where Stanley, as Stanley, actually goes to meet the Watcher. Mm. To, to like, you just made me realize he's gonna. He's been reporting on us. Right. That's why he's been in all of these movies. That would make he's sense. He's been in the Sony Spider-Man <laughs> movies. He's been in the X-Men movies. He's crossed he's been, all companies. He's crossed yeah, yeah. all companies, <laughs> all all universes. If you were to go and make a report, that's something James Gunn would do. Yeah. You know, in his, I would love to see that. He and reports to. We hope Marvel uh, the movie division is watching this and takes that idea because we think it's good, or just make him a scroll. Just reveal it for me. <laughs> also, right. please invite us to your Doctor Strange screening. Please, please, hope please. This weekend. Yeah, pretty the one please, that's happening please. in New York Comic Con <laughs> this weekend. Um, I want to talk about the Commandy uh, comic book event. Now, Jason, you were mm -hmm. talking, you're obviously going to cover a little bit of that uh, this weekend. You were talking about it's like a 12 issue series. Like, if you're a Jack Kirby fan and you haven't checked out Command E, mm -hmm. do it because it's literally it was Jack kind of being inspired by Planet of the Apes and like, mm -hmm. yeah. all right, what if a uh, what if this guy, this kid was stuck in a weird world where there's like Tiger Man and Ape Man and all these intelligent animals? Well, he's the last boy. He's the he last, last human. Yeah, he's literally the yeah. last man on Earth, and this is where mm -hmm. it comes from. What are your thoughts? And you want to read off well, some of the talent yeah. That they so got? so they revealed this comic book series at Emerald City Comic Con, and it's called the Commandy Challenge, uh, um, and it's. It's going to be a 12-issue miniseries that's going to have a different creative team on every issue telling an interconnected story about Commandy. So who's the creative team that's going to make them publish late? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. None well, of them, because yeah. they're only doing one issue each. Well, You'd be luckily, surprised. Luckily, yeah, they have not released 
a release date. I, yeah, I, I assume yeah, that's yeah. probably going to be forthwith at right. this con. <laughs> right. um, but there are some lot of great. I won't go through all of them because there's 13 different creative teams. But there are some greats in here, like uh, Peter Tomasi, current Superman writer. Neil Adams is in this. Amanda Connor, Jimmy Palmiotti is awesome. in this. Bill Willingham, creator of uh, Fables, is in this. Dan Jurgens, Keith Given, Steve Rude. Nice. Ooh. There is a Tom King and Kevin Eastman story in Come this. Come on now. Walter Simonson's in here, and Len Wein is teaming up with Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. One of the masters. The greatest yeah. thing ever. That sounds great. Uh, definitely, I'll be getting yeah. all 12 of those issues, and then probably they're going to sucker me into getting the you know deluxe yeah. hardbound <laughs> thing. But if this leads to a Commandy TV series, it'll all be worth it, because I'd love to see that. We got War of the Planet of the Apes. We need some Commandy action going on. Um, and you know, let's just quickly say, is the Punisher going to be in Netflix's Defenders? Hell yes, and he's not going to be in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Let's just drop that right now. That's Do not, people, that like, can't really possibly happen. Do people think that? There's no crossover between any of the genres or any of the different medium that Marvel is publishing stories in. I know Sif was in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for like a minute, but that's it. And they've said unequivocally that nothing is going to cross over. Well, they got Ghost Rider and uh, some supernatural things to deal yeah. with now over at Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And they got, you know... An They're the Ghostbusters now. Fighting, you know. Da -na 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 -na. Yeah. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, you know, you know Sam Jackson last week, I read also that he said S.H.I.E.L.D. was probably going to come back. Right. Maybe in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is, of course, it has to now that S.H.I.E.L.D.'s mm. back. Well, and, and they've well, done it in the, the comics. Some yeah, form they brought of it back. S.H.I.E.L.D., but I'd love for them to actually use those human decoys because in the, she the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. premiere season four, uh, they had this r robotic woman who's like, I am yep. an android, and they keep turning her off and on. And she's like, my mission is to shield you. And I was like, ah. <laughs> But at the same time, I was like, hey, wait a minute. That's kind of a cool reappropriation. <laughs> super super well, comic so okay. Someone <laughs> did want to put armor around the world once. That's right. Didn't His work out too well. His name is Tony Stank. Um, <laughs> let's go to flashback. This week, we got Legends of the Superheroes. <laughs> this is before all of you were born. It's 1979. Legends of the Superheroes aired way back in 1979 on NBC as two 60-minute live-action television specials produced by Hanna-Barbera, airing on January 18th and January 25th. The series was loosely based on Hanna-Barbera's Super Friends cartoon show, which was airing then back on Saturday mornings on ABC, back when there were literally only three channels to click around on. This was a bizarro <laughs> reunion for the 1960s Batman TV series with Adam West and Burt Ward as Batman and Robin and Frank Gorshin coming back as the Riddler. We love those guys. These corny laugh track riddled over the top comedy specials were shot like a variety stage show with outside action segments kind of uses cutaways in between this variety kind of gag laugh track thing. This was also the very first time that we as little children, me and Robert, saw Hawkman, Green Lantern, Solomon Grundy, Huntress, Captain Marvel, The Flash, Black Canary, and The Atom all as live action counterpoint characters. We also kind of got Ed McMahon as himself, Ruth Buzzy as Aunt Minerva, and Pat Carroll as Hawkman's mom. Pat so, Carroll? I know, you know, th let's try to remember that these crazy specials were the first of their Who's kind. Who's the guy in the cape with the SC? Um, I've been trying to figure it out the entire Santa time. Santa Claus. Who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a ca Captain Tumblr. I don't know what his name is. Uh, uh, but uh, this kind of, this opened the doors for like, you know, not only bad television shows to follow, but also where we are now mm -hmm. is, you know, the renaissance that we live in right now of television and movies following. And, and all of these characters that we can list and see right here are all either major television or movie action heroes right now or starring in the show's that are surround those heroes. So to list off all those people and then realize that we're going to be seeing Hawkman, we're going to see Green Lantern, we're going to see, you know, we, I don't know when we're going to see Captain Marvel. It's coming up soon. We got The Flash already as a TV mm -hmm. series and a movie. Black Canaries and Arrow. Adam is in Legends of Tomorrow. It's kind of crazy. And then you go back and see this and it was like, well, we don't know how to, what, what are these crazy comic books? Well, <laughs> we did have that series from the 60s. Robert, what are your thoughts about Le Legends of the Superheroes? Uh, the depths to which I hated this and secretly <laughs> loved it at the same time is, first of all, look, it's the Justice League, you know, and I, I've said before, I'll say it again, I love the Justice League, but to me, this was everything wrong. This is the perception that mundanes, to use a sci-fi convention term, <laughs> had of comic book characters. There's not one iota of trying to take this seriously. Even in the Batman, the campy Batman 60s show, mm -hmm. 
they took themselves seriously, you know? And I just don't believe that any of these characters, I love Shazam, the mm -hmm. Shazam TV, the Saturday morning TV Total. show. And even Shazam didn't take himself seriously the way he did Was on his own actor? Saturday. Or a different guy? Well, there's two actors in the original Shazam, okay. but I think it's not one of those two. I don't right. remember, but I, as, if I remember it correctly, it's not. But even Shazam wasn't like, I, I, I just was like, really? It was like everything I held dear, they right. just made fun of me. Right. I felt they were making fun of me, mm -hmm. personally. <laughs> well, you know what? I was I'm with you in that same camp where I absolutely hated it, but loved it in the same way, because it was like, there's Solomon Grundy. That was that. <laughs> was the, it, I know, that's Lurch, but he's also Solomon Grundy. Uh, that like, was, I know. And, and the rock monster from Star Trek TOS. <laughs> that's right. Well, I mean, it's really cool to see all of these cartoon characters, these comic book characters that uh, as we were reading as little kids, in stuff like the Justice Society of yeah. America, or, you know, or you know, Batman, or any of these characters, and we're able to see them, even though it was like a super corny. Even when we were little children, we, we were offended. It was like the adults don't understand the comics, well, the depth of the comics that know, we read. You know, to give an analogy to this, because uh, I don't have the same perspective that you guys have on this. I know of Legends of the Superheroes, and you're talking about how seeing these characters that you'd never imagined. For me, that was Smallville for me. Got it. And Smallville sometimes had you were some lucky. Yeah, had some, well, yeah, but <laughs> Smallville had some really bad episodes sure, and yeah, some really bad interpretations. But, but nothing, nothing, nothing but compared to this. But not, no, no, in the same episode, because like Blue Beetle would look like crap, but Booster would be like, yeah. really, you're like, oh, but, but, you're but right. for, for me, it was the same thing. That even though it was like a crappy version of Blue Beetle, I was still like, that's Blue Beetle. Totally. Yeah, you know. So I, I kind of, I. I even though I don't understand this right. thing and, and, and the, the roasting and stuff like that, I, 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 I feel it. I feel it for you. Well, what's really gross. scary about what you just said <laughs> is when this show was made, uh, Booster Gold didn't even exist yet. That's right. It right. didn't come into being for another seven years. I think yeah. we Blue need to... Beetle existed, but he was the older Blue Beetle. He was younger. the Charlton. Yeah. Charlton, Charlton yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but I want to appreciate that. We have Huntress in like her original costume on right. screen here, and she looks pretty good she kind of yeah. looks like she's gonna go do aerobics and hawkman <laughs> looks amazing yeah. like i really like fall kenshul's new hawkman but like that's like he looks like hawkman yeah, a lot of the outfits really are, cool. are pretty cool and some of them are not so cool like the guy with the toilet paper or whatever <laughs> yeah. like, who is that hey green um, lantern's got a pretty good domino mask actually right? yeah 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 i think it's like a pretty good a pretty mm. good attempt i think that what they tried it's to like a, a also, solid c yeah <laughs> but yeah. it shows why wolverine cannot wear the yellow spandex yeah. in the yes. movie but, you know, back then, you got Ruth Buzzy kicking it. You got a whole bunch of these other people like, hey, I'm the toilet man or whatever his name is. <laughs> I'm the toilet yeah. man. It, look, it, it, mom's upset, you know. They needed Martha Ray from the Buggaloos, man. Then oh. it would have been great. Oh, it just man. upped the ante just a little. Solomon Grundy, never on a Monday. All right, <laughs> Twitter questions. Cecil Hops, do you think comics are losing readers or is it specifically physical media comics? I use Comixology. Well, Cecil, I don't think um, a lot of people have jumped on the Comixology bandwagon as much as they uh, uh, previously maybe maybe have hoped, but it is slowly amassing, and more and more people are reading digital comics. And lo and I'm glad to say that the recent last couple months have reported that more and more people are back to reading physical comics. More and more people are going back into the comic book stores and buying some issues. I am so happy to be able to report that. It makes me happy because I love going to comic book stores. Today's Wednesday, I'm gonna go check out some comic book stores in New York, perhaps Midtown Comics. But uh, what are your guys' thoughts, uh, physical or digital? What do you think? I am a physical trade collector and I like to read my issues digitally because I don't have that much space. Mm. Um, and I do think it's a crime that nobody's counting the digital sales because I think that for like some of your quote, weirder stuff, like something like Gotham Academy versus uh, the, the regular Batman title. I think that if you counted those sales, you would see that, I think those books are doing better than people expect them mm -hmm. to. I think independent comics are doing better than people would expect them to. And I think that if you counted those sales, some books that have gone away might not have gone away mm. as much. But I think, I think there's always gonna be comic stores. It might be that in 50 years and in 100 years, I'm going into the comic book store and I'm saying, um, I would like a copy of Blue Beetle and they'll just print it for me right there. Like it might get that mm. niche, right. but I think because comics as an industry is such a collector mentality that even though it'll change, it will never go away. I like what you said, and you know what? I also think of comic book stores in some way, shape, or form as a destination site, mm -hmm. and I think it's kind of a, you need to have that community, and our community as far as comic book readers have, has dissipated 
to a, a large degree, and I'd like to see it come back together. What comic book conventions do, like you know Stan Lee's comic convention, the upcoming New York Comic Con, they bring all of us together mm -hmm. to enjoy this world that we like and love. So I think comic book stores are the smaller comic book convention that happens every week. So you have to kind of look at it like that way and get involved in your community, go to your local comic book stores and you know help them by buying comics. What are your thoughts? You know, it's interesting because I don't really know what the answer to this question is. I don't, I do kind of think it may be, might be because the people going from physical to digital, because I agree with Ashley that, that like, yeah, digital sales aren't counted. And like a lot of books, I think their numbers would change and stuff like that. Um, I'm the same way. I've started going more and more digital because of the same factor that I used to have just so many long boxes. And I was like, I can't have this many long boxes anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to go digital. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think that you would be surprised that I think that the old school comic book fans are the ones that go to the comic book shop every week. I, I still do it even though I only buy like one or two things or a trade. Mm -hmm. And I think the newer comic book readers are the digital readers. I really do. I think anybody that has started reading like 2000 on is reading digital right now. And I think everybody that was pre-2000 is like going to the store and, and buying the floppies. I think the people are still there they're just reading in different ways. They're harnessed differently. Yes. I would love to see comic book stores kind of initiate a tablet type of like area where people yes. can, where you can read you comics. Can rent it out. Yeah, so I, I think mm -hmm. I want to see that happen because once again, you're making your store a destination site. Mm -hmm. You're making it a place where people can congregate and come together and, 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 and worship the comic book world. I think especially digital comic book mm -hmm. individual readers as they keep reading those comics, eventually they'll want to have that collected hardcover. You cover. will, yeah. you want that omnibus. But that, yeah. if retailers do that and you embrace the thing that you fear, then you can't be destroyed by digital comics. Like I've worked in comics retail in a couple different places and everyone fears comicsology, but mm. if, if you can do something like that, like, okay, like we have this subscription, you can read anything on here for $10. Yes you're not losing, you're profiting off the thing that is threatening your business. So, I mean, from just an economic standpoint, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, I think the digital and uh, you know paper world or the printed world have to come together. And I think they are, and it's like, it's slowly like, it's happening just naturally, mm -hmm. you know? And I think we're gonna figure it out. How about you, Robert? Well, like you, I mean, I, I don't buy weekly comics anymore. I buy, I love the omnibuses. I love mm -hmm. the DC Absolute Editions. You know, I'm probably a year behind because I'll buy the big like, Marvel's latest Secret Wars. I bought the first hardcover of that, which I was really interested mm -hmm. in. And like, I love having Ed Brubaker's entire run of Captain America. Sure. Like, I'll, I'll pull one of those omnibuses out and just sit in a Sunday afternoon and read it for three hours. So yes. say we all. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's great. And and I again, I look back at my long boxes of comics and I'm, I'm sort of rediscovering 30 years of comic books. Yeah. And I'm kind of going through them going, oh, I forgot. Like, I have every issue of Alien Legion, you know, that I can, I can read. Or, <laughs> I, know. I have the entire run of Marvel Star Wars. And, yeah. you know, there's things that I'd forgotten. You can that sell I'd, that for so much. Uh, Especially I mean, at issue 107. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the Who Jibs, mm. you know, and I'm like, wow, I forgot about the Who Jibs. Yeah, Cynthia Martin, that was the artist from the last issue, which I own. <laughs> but, uh, but, I, but I think you're right. I mean, uh, what I. I think that comic book stores need a change as far as their perception goes. Like you were always talking about more of like a comic book salon, yeah. <laughs> you know, where people mm -hmm. would come together Boutique. or a pop culture salon yeah. where you could go. Cause that was the fun part about, you know, New York, uh, as my, I might go visit that as well. Forbidden planet. Oh yeah. You One know, of my is, favorite mm. stomping grounds from it, the East New coast. York's forbidden oh, yeah. planet and, and London's forbidden planet. Oh, yeah. Great. Because it's just full of all kinds of stuff. Yes. You know, they've got unique things, one of a kind things. They've got toys. They've got import stuff from all over. I mean, it's it's like getting a, a copy of the Diamond Distribution Catalog, but all in one place. That's right. You know, and that's what a, that's what a pop culture salon should be. Well, I think we've got to see more of those. If the, there's a few that have, have started to sprinkle about, there's one in Philadelphia, which is like a coffee house slash comic comic book store and mm -hmm. it's run by a woman who worked across the street at a coffee house and that comic book store closed and she was like you know what i am going to open a comic book store coffee house and it's a big success it's in philadelphia i can't remember what it's called i'll look it up check it out there's um, another one there's a, a coffee shop uh, slash comic book store in norman oklahoma it's called speeding bullets nice well, I there's like one in Burbank, and I don't remember what it's called. Well, the these Perky are Nerd. All Perky Nerd. Perky it just, Nerd. just opened. Mm, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, in Burbank? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, just we down gonna, the street. We're yeah. going to have to go <laughs> we there. Can, we, could, we could walk right. there. <laughs> uh, that's so awesome. So I want to see that transformation happen. And anybody who runs a comic book store who's watching this, check it out. See if that could be part of 2017 for you. Next question. We've got New Man Logic asks, what if Man of Steel 2 is Superman and the Legion of Superheroes? 
I'll start off. I don't think they're going to do that right away. Um, there's a, it's a complicated mythology <laughs> to the Legion of Superheroes. It's not only in the year 30,000. It's like um, it's in the future. Uh, yeah. But uh, I think they got to deal with some characters like maybe, uh, say, Brainiac or some uh, or, you know, Lex Luthor. You know, I think there's a lot to do with Man of Steel, too. Now that we've, you know, grounded him and he's coming back in Justice League, obviously he's going to be Un returning. Yeah. <laughs> he's coming back. So when they actually come to Man of Steel 2, I think they're going to want to cover some of the mythology of Superman before they go into other de other characters. What are your thoughts? I mean, I think uh, New Man Logic who asked this question, if that's what you're looking for, I would look for the TV shows because there's been a lot of Easter eggs oh, yeah. for there's a Legion ring that we see when they're going through time that's in Kara's Fortress of Not Solitude something else mm -hmm. quietude no. uh <laughs> it's not what it is i just can't remember and now i feel like an idiot but but there are legion easter eggs in the cw universe so that's where i would look to it for that it's a great cartoon on amazon that you can stream for free that's all legion all the time i think man of steel 2 i think is a really great call that we explore some of that krypton world that was set up in the opening scene of man of steel which also coincidentally is something that the audience really liked and if man of steel uh like a lot of the dc uh, movies right now is looking to sort of revamp and tie more into what the audience wants. That would be a really smart move. Definitely. How about you, Jason? Uh, I agree with Ashley because if you remember back at the TV Critics uh, Association, whatever you call that, the press event, TCA's, TCA's uh, they announced that Mon L is on Supergirl. Mon right, L right. is a member of the Legion of Superheroes. That's right. I think we will see Superman and the Legion of Superheroes. It's just going to be on the Supergirl TV show. But I, I think you're right. Yeah. I think I'm with I'm with you, John. Uh, ever since the Tim Burton movie way back in the 90s that they were they were they talked about Brainiac, I have been aching for a Brainiac movie. I yeah. I, I know when um Brian Singer was very quickly going to make a sequel to Superman Returns. The villain they announced was Brainiac. I think you ask any Superman fan on the street, the villain they want to see is Brainiac. But yeah. who do you cast if not Benedict Cumberbatch? Well, uh, I mean, but, you know, <laughs> before we get to Robert, who's probably got some good stuff to say about this, um, I was also going to throw in earlier last week, we talked about uh, a, a villain of uh, for Superman that hasn't been uh, done yet uh, theatrically, and I'd say Mr. Mitzelplitik. But oh, I would man. just I would get it's, rid it's of I would uh, get rid of the Mister. Just call him Mitzelplitik and make him a demon. Now let me you ask know? you a question: Do you want to do the teenage version that showed up on Smallville, or do you want to do uh, bring back a classically trained Gilbert. actor from mm -hmm. Lois and Clark: The New Adventures of Superman, Howie Mandel, right. as Mister Mitzelspitalik? Is, is yes. he voiced by Gilbert Gottfried? In Gilbert Gottfried in the animated series, I would say <laughs> not, none of the you above. Know, you want no, Howie come no, back? <laughs> no, none of that. I just want an evil warlock the way uh, Alan Moore wrote him. <laughs> What are your thoughts, Robert? Well, Man look, of Steel 2. I love the Legion of Superheroes. I'm, I'm a I'm an old school Legion fan. I was reading Legion as a kid. One of my favorite comic experiences was when Keith Giffen took over the Legion and you opened the first, they went back to number one and you opened the first page and it just said five years later. I was later. gonna say the five yeah. years later Legion, yeah. That yeah. was so, and the Time Trapper destroyed the universe like eight times. It was awesome, awesome, read that <laughs> stuff. But you have to have had that history before mm -hmm. it was, you understood how awesome it was. But again, right, like you just said, I can't see it happening in a movie because you have to introduce not just one character, but you know whether it's Saturn Girl, whether it's Lightning Lad, I mean, you have to introduce all of these characters all at once and no one's gonna know mm -hmm. who they are. But uh, uh, you've already got shows like Supergirl and Legends of Tomorrow that can that can work that in. I'll bet we see the Legion. Oh, of yeah. Legends of mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Well, like you said, Monel, and now we've got Superman already in Supergirl. I yep. think they're setting it up. And remember, so. who is a very famous boyfriend of Supergirl? Brainiac Five. Mm, that's Member right. of the Legion of Superheroes. Purple outfit. I love yep, them totally. Together. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We got Ross Marchant asking: Could we possibly see, or at least hear of, Shang Chi in the Netflix <laughs> Iron Fist? You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if they did give a little intro, a little Shang Chi action. I mean, kung, I mean, it's kung fu. I mean, we're gonna have a the lot. The master of yeah, kung fu. Yeah, the master of kung fu. It's it's gonna be cool. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it. What are your thoughts? Uh, I'm gonna respectfully say that we are not gonna see that because Shang Chi, although he is of the ethnicity that you expect people to be doing martial arts with. We've decided to go with Iron Fist because we're going for the Luke Cage Iron Fist team up. Right. And I just think that doing Shane Chi would be too much of retreading the same ground. Mm. I think that if we were going to see him, he would be introduced maybe at the end of a Defenders in launching like the next wave right of uh, the Netflix Marvel shows. But I think in the, in, the, in the broad category of everyone who's ever been a Defender and everyone who is a street level New York hero, why would you do the same thing when you can do you could expand Misty Knight. You could expand Hellcat. We have like a ton of other sure. characters who've already been in. Good call. How about you, Robert? Well, only because Shang Chi was a big part of my young 
comic book reading Paul childhood. And, and I, Paul Gulacy is one of my favorite yeah. artists. I mean, then when he did that science fiction series, Six from Sirius. Loved it. And Six, Six from, from Sirius, Sirius needs to be a movie, yo. <laughs> and Six from Sirius 2. Yeah. Even what was the other one? The Marauders? It was like, you know, <laughs> I think so. Something, yeah, I something like that. But, but I, have, I have one word for you about that. Uh -oh. Chinatown. Thanks. New York's Chinatown. Somebody just has to go for a meal. There's Shang Chi. Mm. No, I, I think. Cool. I mean, he's just yeah. there, and it's it's like I love that. It was a direct sale comic, I think, and maybe it wasn't. I mean, Doug it's, Mensch. Right. It was, it was before direct sales. Right. It was right, but that's right. But Doug Mensch, and then he yes. went on did Moon Knight, which mm -hmm. was one of the first three direct sale yeah. Marvel titles. But I love that character. I love Master of Kung Fu. I'd love to see that happen. Well, they just happen to be uh, publishing the Paul Glacey, uh, Doug Mench, uh omnibuses, so you can pick all those up, either through Comixology or buy a giant brick, <laughs> which could kill you. Um, what are your thoughts? I was furiously looking through my phone as you guys were talking about because I was certain that we had had a Shang-Chi Easter egg in Daredevil, okay. and I could not place it. I still couldn't place it. Um, I do know that for a long time, Shang-Chi was involved in legal troubles, and that the reason why Marvel can mm -hmm. republish any of those on the buys was because he's tied to Fu Manchu, oh, which weird. is not even owned by Marvel. It's, uh, it's, I, a, it's a public domain character that somebody recently reacquired the yeah. rights to, which is yeah, what caused that. Yeah, so I think they finally got that cleared up. I do think we will say Shang-Chi. I, I think he will be introduced probably at the end of Iron Fist, if not Defenders, mm -hmm. but I kind of I kind of agree a little bit with Ashley that I think that he's not going to be as large of a part. No. I think he'll get like a scene or a cameo. Yeah. But cuz Iron Fist is basically filling his role. Yeah. With a with a better costume. Well, I <laughs> hope so. Let's get into the sweaty question of the week. It's from Jesus Acebalos Jr. What's up, Cuban Superman? I finally got my wish of Deathstroke going to the big screen. What villains are you hoping make it to the DCEU? Well, um, we just talked about Brainiac. That's one for <laughs> yeah. Superman that I'd love to see. What are some other villains that you're thinking about that could make the transition into either Justice League, Wonder Woman, Flash, Aquaman? I mean, obviously with Aquaman, we're hearing about Ocean Master, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. what about Black Manus? I want to see that dude with a weird, strange saucer helmet, you know? Black Manta would be a lot of fun, and he has. Black Manta, sorry. Uh, it's okay. Black Manta, that'd be cool too. He's right. got such a great, he's got such a great look. So right. why not? And then like, but but once you've done the two of them, you've pretty much extinguished all Aquaman right. villains, and you're gonna you're forced to create something new. Not a villain, but like the the like questionably good or evil character that I really want to see is Catwoman because. Uh, from my point of view, we haven't had a live action Catwoman done to my satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So I would really love to see her and I would love to see them really play on like the relationship that you see with Batman and Hush. The idea that they really need each other because they always just want to make her a villain because that's the obvious thing to do. Um, and I think you can have a really dynamic storytelling there that we're seeing more of in the DC films. They're really going like quite deep into character. Whether or not people like that is your opinion. And I think that would be a great way to introduce her into the larger cinematic universe. Nice. What about you, Robert? Well, you know, I again, I can't stop and not think New Teen Titans villains because that's where Deathstroke, I first encountered Deathstroke. I love Brother Blood. I knew you were going to say Brother Blood. I love <laughs> Brother Blood. Yeah. I love Mother Mayhem. I love cults. Cults are great villains. Batman you know? the yeah. cult. I mean, yeah, and I would love that. Was That was great. I mean, that was Jim Starlin, I think. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't know how you would work that into a movie. I just can't see Superman or Batman taking on Brother Blood, although I like Brother Blood. Perhaps Cyborg and his friends, the Titans, shall you well, know, absolutely. have to encounter. Right. You, I mean, you have to have Raven if you're doing Brother Blood. Yeah. Right. Yes. And I, what I really want is Trigon. Trigon. Hell yeah. <laughs> not, not Terra? Come on. Tara. No, no, no. <laughs> no, but that's part of the whole thing. I yeah, think that yeah. all of that flavor has yeah. got to all come at the same time. And, I, you know, again, we were talking about the Dominators. I love the DC cosmic era. Like, I love the Omega Men, which is a New Teen Titans spinoff. Yes. You know, I love Commandar, you know, Corindar's evil sister. And I, I just Black love <laughs> all that stuff. It was great. And I'd love to see those people come back. The, the Scions, mm. the Scions and the Dominators. Mm -hmm. the Perhaps you will. I know. How about you, Jason? Um, one I really want to see that I think we will see just the way that Just League is going is I want to see Orion, the son of Darkseid, with his oh, like little yeah. with his little Scooter. motorbike and, and and his and his weird sort of Magneto helmet and, and and just like they introduced like a new design of him in the New Fifty Two Cliff Chang Wonder Woman and they made this awesome action figure and he looks great and he's yeah. um, if you don't know anything about Orion there's a great Walt Simonson series there's also the original Jack Kirby series go check it out I hope he shows up in a movie somewhere I think he will yeah. the one that I don't know if they'll do but I think would be a Amazing is Despero. 
Mm. Despero, oh. the giant finned, uh, sure. three-eyed yeah. guy. And they could do either version of Despero. You could do the skinny, kind of like crazy version of Despero, who's all about mind games. Or you do like the hulked out version of Despero, right. where he's like tearing the team apart and pulling Martian Manhunter in you half. Don't, you don't see him as a character who's more likely just to show up in the TV universe? I think he might be way over the budget of a TV universe. Mm. That's true. Yeah, That's you know, because uh, he's kind of almost a doomsday level threat. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned Orion. I was going to say Darkseid. I, I mean, yeah. he got Mother Bob boxes in Justice League, there's no way that they're not introducing the new gods. How about, there's how absolutely about Granny no way. Goodness? Granny Goodness, you're going to have Lashina, <laughs> you're going to have the whole crew, you're going to have You know everybody. another one that I'm really excited about? Mr. Miracle. Metron. Metron. In his Metron. chair, in his yeah. Mobius chair, like how awesome is that? I, I want Willem Dafoe, I know he's going to be an Aquaman, he would have mm -hmm. been a great Metron, but yeah. you know what, I mean, there's not, not a shadow of a doubt in my mind that Orion will be, mm -hmm. if not an Easter egg in Just League, he will be introduced because boom tubes have got to go somewhere. Yep. Yep. And you got to go to Apocalypse and you also have to go to the new gods, uh, Genesis, new mm -hmm. Genesis. Well, you so, know, this is going to seem crazy, People are going to be like, Burnett's, what did he say? But if you look at the movie Flash Gordon, mm -hmm. okay, Flash Gordon is a campy, I get all that. Right. But imagine if Flash Gordon wasn't campy, right. but you still had that production design. That to me is New Genesis and Apocalypse. It's like mm. Ming is dark side sure. you know princess aura all those people the way they want all the evil villains and the, the the grand production design and grand costumes i could see them i want to see a pantheon i want to see all of apocalypse done up with the lavishness that they they brought to I, Flash I love that Gordon. yeah because the, the the production design did have that lavish feel you know it's another funny one back from the for another pull from the oldies is masters of the universe they were actually using new gods as they just threw away all the all the stuff from masters of the universe and they just basically the director was like i just want to make a new gods movie really? so they literally <laughs> had references to boom tubes they just weren't called boom uh, tubes. so right everything about like skeletor yeah. was dark side it's so, so funny you were bringing that up too because like um and you were talking about the production design and stuff like that um and, more so than characters, I am so beyond excited. I hope we get to hear this in Justice League. I want to hear what a boom tube sounds like. Yes, like we've heard like sounds weird like things. Boom. Well, yeah, but I, I want to like I want to be sitting in the awesome like right. AMC Prime Theater or whatever, and it's like. Pfft, you know, just like shake you know your what? seat. You know, my <laughs> idea of what a boom tube sounds part? like is yeah. from is I think I can't remember what Star Wars prequel it was. It was like one of the only cool things was like Boba Fett had these like mind. Oh, devices. that would like it took a second like, and blew up. And yeah, the yeah. sound kind of just went away. The sonic mines yeah. that was yeah. an attack of the clones. And it would be like that to me is what a boom tube like. All yeah, thing. It was silent. Movie. Yeah. Well, you know, there's there's certain indelible sci-fi sounds like the TARDIS arriving. Yes. The sound loving of, it. Or or the sound of the phasers on the original mm -hmm. series. You know, there's these or even the doors. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There's just indelible uh, the lightsaber right? igniting yeah. or tie fighters. I mean, yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are sounds. I mean, a boom tube needs that signal. It has so, to have that sound. So yeah, if a boom tube counts as a character, I'm if now it, more excited for a boom tube. If it doesn't become somebody's text alert, <laughs> right. you're doing it wrong. It's gonna, yeah, all those other things are people's yeah, text alerts. Yeah, that's gonna alerts. have to be my phone ring is a boom tube, son. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of like the when they're about to fire the Death Star and you see the the audio switcher <laughs> followed by that sonic noise from yes. Django Fett's mind. I know off. whoever's designing the sound effects for Justice League right now. I hope you're watching this because I know a boom tube's got to be in there, yo. Anyway, that's it for Collider Heroes episode 77. Come by our live panel tomorrow at 11:15 and say hey to all of us. We're really excited to do it. Once again, we're in room 1A24 at 11:15 New York Comic Con. Definitely come by, say hello to us. You can find me at booth 309. Maybe some of these guys and gals will come by and hang out at the booth with me. So definitely come by tomorrow at New York Comic Con. I want to thank our guest, Robert Meyer Burnett. Where can we find you? Well, you can find me uh, on Instagram at RM Burnett, Twitter, Burnett RM, or on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. Or you can watch us, the two of us, you can watch us on... Uh the Schmodown. Yeah, Schmodown, where Team Heroes goes against the Wolves of Steel. Ow! <laughs> Let's see what happens. Jason, where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Jawin, J A W I I N. Uh, also, uh, if you're just brimming to the deep, of excitement for Luke Cage because you just saw it and you're just like, oh, I need more, I need more. Uh, Ashley and I do a podcast called Geek History Lesson. This week we did Misty Knight. Yeah, she was in the show. And last week we did Luke Cage. So if you want a full Damn. history lesson, head on over to iTunes, get that. Yeah, speaking of Luke Cage, definitely watch all of our reviews of the uh, series. We don't want you to miss that. Um, where can we find you online, Ashley? You can 
find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V Robinson. The V is very important. And if you like me and Jason even more and you want to buy some stuff, uh, go to your local comic book shop or to New York Comic Con and you can pick up the If Anthology from Alterna Comics and you can order the Love is Love Anthology from DC and IDW. We have stories in both of those. Nice. And uh, once again, I'm John Schnepp. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram just at John Schnepp at New York Comic Con booth 309. Me and Holly Payne are going to be there selling our Death of Superman Lives What Happens special edition signed and also check out the new statue I'll have a prototype there you can pre-order it of Unicron the Unicorn Barbarian I'm going to be going to all these different panels hanging out with all these guys and having a lot of fun so definitely come to New York Comic Con tomorrow and check it out and come back next week for Collider Heroes 78 see you then hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider